All right, hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are gonna be going over the best characters to use in Arena uh, for the post-apocalyptic world. Um, so let's get started. All right, so here's kind of the agenda that we're gonna run through. We're gonna look at the best characters that I rank um, that's being used in Arena. And then we're gonna look at kind of the current matchups that I kind of see and it's kind of where it's devolving into or, or settling on. And then we're just go over some of the current defenses or my current defense and then you guys can give opinions on it. Um, disclaimer, uh, as always, the game's always changing. Never, if you find this video in the future, check out when it was released. You know, things, that, things in this game change on a dime. Um, and again, everyone's shards different. I started the game on launch, so I'm in a shard with a lot of old veteran players. If you're still facing dark hold, I'm sure some of the offensive teams still hold true, but you know, we're talking apples and, and oranges, right? So everyone's shard is different, so okay, take that into account. And nothing truly holds on defense. Uh, I may put a disclaimer on that. There is something, if you don't have certain characters, that may uh, be kind of a very difficult struggle for you, but we'll talk about that as well. Um, but before we go move further, please uh, like and subscribe and join the content. It does help me uh, see if this is uh, how much effort to put into something like this. And so let's get going. All right, so number eight, Emma Frost. Now, Apocalypse uh, is supposed to negate uh, Emma Frost's negative 10 speed uh, from opponents' uh, passive, and he does. Um, the only reason she, she makes this list is for the people that does that do not have Apocalypse. And so there are still a lot of people that does this until, or, or do not have Apocalypse, and therefore, if you are in a shard where you are, it's somewhat exclusive that you have Apocalypse and other people don't, or not as many people do, you may consider her on defense because the only people you then have to really worry about will be the ones that do have Apocalypse. But you need to, you need to gauge this out with your in your arena shard. My arena shard, if I look at who has what, they all have Apocalypse, so she's pretty much useless. But it doesn't negate the fact that she still has relevance for on defense for a lot of people. So she makes it in at number eight, Dormammu. Um, Dormammu, you know, obviously he has his revive one gimmick. Uh, I, I don't want to call it a gimmick. Well, it's, it's, his, it's his best ability, right? Um, and it does come in handy when you are countering uh, Emma Frost on defense. So for people that do not have Apocalypse, there is a combination of teams, which we'll, I'll discuss later, where Dormammu is a factor and can help you overcome the uh, the Emil Frost fact, uh, uh, placement on defense. So, but, so he still has relevance, but only very slightly in one specific matchup and only if you don't have Apocalypse. So Emil Frost and Dormammu scooting into the list simply for people that do not have Apocalypse as a as a option to be able to use on offense. Uh, number six, Morgan Le Fay has, has re-entered the building. So she has, she completely fell out of the arena meta, uh, but she is obviously a very strong character. And with the release of Apocalypse, uh, she has re-entered the meta. You're gonna see her used on offense and you're gonna see her placed on defense. Um, obviously, once she gets going, uh, it's very it's very difficult as she you know her ultimate will control is a, is devastating to controller enemies uh, reduces speed bars I sometimes use the ultimate just for the even if the opponents have uh, immunity just for the speed bar reduction and then also the special itself wipes everyone's and then clears all buffs and does significant damage so she's back on in the arena meta and then here he is apocalypse himself and you're just like apocalypse is number five yeah. Um, I can go into a whole diatribe on the uh, expectation versus reality of this character, but it is what it is, right? Um, his his main purpose is to, uh, after the rework again, uh, and here's another disclaimer. This is after his first rework. So he was released and he has been reworked once. There has been hints that he may be reworked again, according to Scopely's blogs. But we'll see. But this is based on Apocalypse 2.0. Um, and all, his buffs, all it did was really wipe away the Spider Weaver and Spider-Man 2099 Arena meta. Um, and it was, it really, it was geared specifically for that, that they're just gone. 
they're completely eradicated. Um, and then also his main purpose is to negate Emma Frost. And as I alluded to earlier, why Emma Frost is still on this list. Um, his other abilities are nice, but they're not necessarily the ones that kind of win, you know, win the match for you. And we'll get to that in a little in a, in a little bit. But I mean, he has some good good abilities. His empowered ability was fixed. If you've ever seen my video of him uh, losing to Greg, or not losing to Greg, but incap incapable of one shotting Greg with his empowered ability. They fixed it. They did add a, a base damage to it. Uh, a very again a very minor point, but again it's apocalypse, and the dude is the only two, uh, only character in all of Marvel Strike Force that can't kill a Greg with an offensive ability. So glad they fixed that. And his special uh, does still apply some defense up, safeguard immunity to your own team. So there's some use there. So he does come in at number five. Um, it is he he is kind of the. Uh, the pivot point for uh, of deciding of who has who are the haves and who are the have nots because although you don't really need him um, if you don't have him it's one of the defensive teams can be very difficult for you coming in at number four rogue she was actually number four the last time I did this as well still a fantastic tune she is above apocalypse because she is consistently on the team that will beat the arena defense meta if there is such a thing and even without apocalypse uh, her special is still absolutely cr uh, crippling her aoe is absolutely massive her taunt gives great protection so rogue comes in at number four uh, number three is red hulk now um, i made a video a long time ago and i still kind of stand by that that i kind of was like i think red hulk kind of sucks <laughs> And here he is at number three. And the reason I was not a big fan of Red Hulk wasn't necessarily because he was weak at the time, right? It was because I, I never really like characters that are, you know, you have to do things for their things to go off, you know, like his, his ultimate ability. But Arena is a tad bit different. Arena is really about that first couple of salvos and it's done. Because the, the characters are so powerful now that, if it, and that's why going first is so important is that you control the match and everyone does so much damage and everyone does so much controlling that the fight's pretty much over. And so he has an amazing, uh, his his revive one mechanic is really not that important anymore because the mom was pretty much off the table. But the speed rewind is important. It does it to the primary and the adjacent targets. And so again, if you're going first and you're able to speed rewind, it's a very amazing ability to help you control that opening move and that in the, in the initial salvo where you're just destroying laying waste to the team that they just can't recover from so he makes it in at number three i know there is a he does have an ultimate but and um he gets extra charges with apocalypse or he gets in a plus one right um based on his turn so it will go off sooner but you don't really need it in this context because the fight's pretty much done um, if it does go off, then you uh, you kind of misplayed it. But uh, at the end of the day, it is still available. Um, and number two, Icarus and Cersei. So I also made a video a while back that, uh, that declared the top ten has beens, and uh, and that was based on the premise like, look, all these characters have life cycles, and they were pretty long in the tooth at that point. And I will I will say this. Uh, they're greatly designed characters. We, you know, we, we do make fun of Scopely a lot. Uh, this is coming from the people that designed Apocalypse, a year-long unlock, and can't kill a Greg with an empowered ability. But I will give credit where credit is due. Th these two, you know, I called it wrong. I'll, 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 I'll admit it. Um, I was going, again, going on the basis that they were really old characters, and they were looking to try to offset them, but here they are. And the reason they're at number two is they still beat Apocalypse and the Horsemen. So if you see Apocalypse and the Horsemen, Icarus and Cersei, and a combination of Red Hulk and Rogue, and I know some, the MSF community is very clever. Uh, they've come up with all sorts of different things. You can just blow them up, and that's a shame, right? I mean, it, on the one hand, it's great that you don't really need Apocalypse to win on offense. Um, 
But then on the flip side, it's kind of a shame because this is Apocalypse and the Horsemen. You spend a year and then they're just get blown away. Um, I do like using this team. Uh, I'll win in 40 seconds roughly. Um, so that's kind of my go-to team whenever I see Apocalypse and the Horsemen. So greatly designed characters, whoever did it. I'm sure it's not the same dude that designed Apocalypse. That'd be my guess. But uh, welcome back to the list, Icarus and Cersei. And of course, number one is going to be Kang the Conqueror. Um, he has a he has very high speed. Um, it's not the highest, but it is the second best out of the useful tunes. Uh, Red Hulk is above him, and there's other ones that are faster, right? Like Black Widow. Who cares? You know, no one uses Black Widow. His main thing is the five percent speed bar for himself and allies on spawn. That's gonna make him relevant for a very long time. Um, Arena again is about who goes first. It's not about speed. All right. If we want to make the distinction between speed and speed bar, it doesn't necessarily matter about speed. It matters about speed bar, because again, if you go first, you're gonna be you're gonna be in a very good position, and you're gonna have a very high probability to win. So the speed bar, and and so if if you think about it before, it was, um, you know, people considered bringing in cable for singular fights, right? Well, cable does the same thing, but now Kang's more useful. Kang is very powerful as opposed to Cable, who's who's weak as hell. Um, his special does massive damage and also applies slow. Um, there's a video, I, I, I can't remember which one it was, but he on his special, he pretty much did a million damage just to the, to the uh, primary target, um, just from his special. Um, and also his ultimate nullifies any revive once. And again, that's it's a nice ability, but and it also speed rewinds, by the way, or uh, turn rewinds. So it is a good ability to remove revive once, but you're not really seeing that anymore. That time I think has kind of ended and is gone. Um, but you know, yeah, but again, if you are running into Dormammu still, I mean, Kang is is the cream of the crop. He's uh, he is the conqueror. He's the king of arena, in my opinion. He's the number one character. Even uh, he'll see him slotted with uh, more teams than not. Um, and and I think from a future perspective. Um, he's always going to be valuable to give you that extra edge to go first. And I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be things in the future where Scopely tries to counter this by making plus 6% speed bar for self and allies, maybe, maybe 10, who knows. But as of right now, Kang is number one on this list. So here's a quick summary before we get into kind of the matchups and defenses. Um, uh, the little fire is kind of uh, signifying kind of the people that just popped up and have moved significantly from the previous list. Um, and then, of course, on the right are the people that were dropped off. As I mentioned earlier, Apocalypse, Spider Weaver, 299 dead. You know, rest in peace. Um, Hela was only there to counter Spider-Man 29's initial salvo, so they go, they go slower. And Kestrel was only on the list to counter Hela's. Because she prevented the summon from going. And Archangel, what a sad state of affairs for Archangel. He's a horseman, spent a whole year, and he's not even part of the crew. Um, I always thought it was a travesty that he didn't... He already speed rewinds on in the game. If you kill you know, if you know, kill an enemy, then he, speed, he, he does like a ping and speed rewinds. I never understood why... With all the horsemen, he didn't on spawn open up and just fly around and just put you know do do some sort of speed bar manipulation. That only seemed to make sense, but uh, they didn't. Um, but there you go: Kang, Icarus, Cersei, Red Hulk, Rogue, Apocalypse, Morgan Le Fay, uh, Dormammu, and Emma Frost. So, and again, Dormammu and Emma Frost are you know, loosely there simply due to the fact and they're only and only relevant for people that um, that don't have apocalypse at this point. And so the only one outside of uh, the horsemen themselves are going to be Kang and Icarus and Cersei. All right, so let's look at some of the matchups. Um, as I stated earlier, if you use the uh, Red Hulk, Rogue, Icarus and Cersei, Kang, that will just annihilate the horsemen in apocalypse 40 second match easy now on the right you see the defense that's the matchup right so um, i do see uh, people still using the full complement of the team and then sometimes they sub kang's there because sometimes they sub out archangel with kang kang doesn't give that speed boost on defense i don't know what the thinking is there 
I'm assuming they're saying like, well, the ult is still powerful. Um, but yeah, the fight's over in 50, six, you know, 40 seconds. And then you can also simply use the horsemen themselves and with Kang. So you're going to go first. That's actually a less efficient fight, but it, you'll get the results the same. It's an easy win, easy win. Now this gets this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, this is for people that do not have Apocalypse yet. That team on the right is a handful. Um, and again, I've only done like one day of testing because obviously I'm limited by the fact of do I even see this on defense. Um, but whenever I did have an opportunity to test, it was a handful. I didn't. I, I lost every single one except for that composition up top, which was given to me on, in the comments by I want to say Thomas Thomas Ritter. I think was it was. I may have messed that name up, but it was somebody in the comments said like, "Hey, use this." They roll all, and I used it, and first try I won. Um, I'm sure the Marvel Strifers community will be very clever and find other ways to beat it, but as of right now, that's the only one I found that had any success. The other ones got obliterated. Um, but then, if you do have Apocalypse, it negates Emma Frost, and it's an easy win. So there you go. So up top left, um, that's heavily RNG. It's not easy fight. Even that is not an easy fight. Okay, let me preface that again, because people are like, you said, I said it's a very RNG-laden fight, and it struggled to barely even win. You can go see the video. And if certain things didn't go my way and, and who they targeted, I probably would have lost. Um, but it had the best chance out of all the ones that I was using. So it, it, it got further down the road, right? <laughs> so that's the, again, very RNG laden attack, but that's better than nothing. And again, until somebody comes up with better, something better, uh, that's what I would recommend. Um, now let's talk about defense. Uh, as you see the first bullet, collusion group. Um, now, I know other people, people are like, well, I'm against that. No, that's, that's cool, man. I totally get you. Um, I was kind of against it at, at, at the end of the day as well. But it, when it boils down to it, the vast majority of my arena shards are in a collusion group. So what does a collusion group do for you? Um, it's basically a human meat shield, right? There's a lot more other people that are not hitting you and versus people that are not in collusion groups that are getting hit by all those people. Um and, and one would argue there's plenty of friendly fire for some reason. And, you know, what's the point of being in a collusion group, guys? Um, but uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, I think that's the best collusion group. You may need to swallow your pride and say, like, hey, look, let me just finally join up just for the fact, just have some peace so I don't get hit by everybody. Um, but if you still maintain that competitive spirit, that died in me a long time ago. Um, I remember I used to be an athlete. I used to play basketball, but... As you get older and have kids, that thing just that relevant that that competitive spirit is pretty much extinguished and no longer relevant. Um, but if you still have it, yeah, go out there, go fight the world. It's up to you. But in, in my opinion, um, it exists. There's no need to stick your hand in it. If you can't beat them, join them. Get those meat shields to um, make your life a little better. And now that on the screen is actually my defense. And you're probably like, Cable, what in the hell is Cable doing there? Well, if you paid attention to my previous two slides, if you have Apocalypse and Kang, you're just destroying everything. There's no chance in hell any of these other teams are going to stop it. All right. However, if you put Cable on there, uh, again, I haven't faced it myself. And I know uh, Cap, if you're watching, I know I saw I saw Cap copy me. He's a copy Cap. Haha. <laughs> Um, but he copied me and he put that on my, on defense as well. Now I haven't played it. I haven't actually hit that thing yet. <laughs> hit that thing yet. I have not fought it yet. And so I don't really know how it plays out. But in theory, my assumption would be that it, because he copied it, it did work, is that it forces the coin flip. Now the other matches are what? 100% guaranteed success win, maybe 99, so because nothing's ever 100%. But if Cable forces a coin flip, now you have to deal with if they, if my defense goes first. Now you got to deal with all that crap, and you and, and you may be in a worse position after you have to deal with the Rogue special, the Red Hulk special, the Morgan Le Fay Ultimate special, Apocalypse special. So it can go downhill very quickly. So that's that's why I put Cable on defense. And uh, right now I'm nowhere. None of my collusion group is in the top twenty. It looks like, or the vast majority are not. 
and I'm still in the top 10 and I've, I've been in the top five ever since Apocalypse came out. And so I think it has some value. Um, again, he's a garbage character, but he does add that speed element and it forces a coin flip. And it's I'm, I'm challenging them saying, OK, well, if you want to take your chances, go ahead, coin flip. And so it's been working well. So, but who knows? Maybe it's all absolute garbage. But uh, that's that's it for me. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this rundown of Arena so far in the post-apocalypse world. Like I said earlier, please uh, like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Leave all, leave any comments you wish. I do read the vast majority of them, and I do get a chance to, or I will respond to the vast majority of them, unless I have no idea what you're saying <laughs> and you're just a random comment. Then I'm like, okay, cool. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, thank you for your support, and I will see you on the next one.